Welcome to the Ministers Papers. Today we're going to talk about painting up some 40k Imperial buildings for my gaming table. Hello and welcome back everybody. Now this is a little bit different because we're actually going to use plastic card uh, in order to make the shape. Uh, if you want to do that, you just have to trace out that line. Um, just a basic line so you can get an idea and you need to replicate it. So what I do here is I take this see-through mirror um, ruler and I just go across the line horizontally. I just want to make sure it's square, so some nice uh, even height throughout. And then spacing it, you have to space it exactly throughout and replicate the lines in what you do. Now measuring at this point is absolutely essential. Now what you're going to do is you're measuring against the factory edge. And once we have that there, we're going to go a long ways right here and cut it out. This is part of my crafting, like my DM crafting uh, skills right here. Uh, where I'm very very particular about actually having the measurement and you need to be because once you do it It is permanent and you kind of want uh, the walls to actually be 100% uh, 90 degree angle with the budding surfaces so where you don't have too many cracks Although if you do have a crack or two, that's okay. These are ruined buildings and you can actually allow for that there <laughs> and I take my time with each one of these uh, and I go throughout Then I take a metal uh, ruler here and on my cutting mat here what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a brand new blade and I'm just going to go straight across and this is a technique that I've learned actually when I was putting up drywall for a little while uh, and then you just score it straight across allowing the pressure keeping the control uh, not putting too much pressure that it bends the blade or something like that but once you've gotten it uh, usually you do it twice and then snap it Let's see oh yeah it's all about getting that perfection right there because <laughs> you know it's nerve-wracking for me to make a cut because once you're cut you're cut but once you already got the first groove second one should be great uh, sometimes an open knife would be better for this application but I do have an exacto blade and that's what I went with because that's what I had available right there also do make some nice blades if you're interested in doing this uh, projects like this for you know other occasions all right all you have to do is snap it back and pow the end see that's just perfect you gonna do the same lengthways as well and what we're doing is just creating extended walls and the reason why you created these extended walls is because well you know sometimes what you do is you have these um, line of sight blocking and what you're going to do is go to take model bits from all pieces. I like to use automotive pieces as well. There you go. But I use all kinds of bits as well. And sometimes you have line of sight blocking on the first floor and you don't want windows there. So I kind of like close it off and I make my own walls. You make your own walls, make it look 40K-ish. Well, yeah, motor stuff, that works. Um, bits and bobs, actually. And, you know, then putting some wires as well. I take these very large gauge wires, which have smaller wires within, and they're all compact. And uh, there you go, you just pull it back, pull the shielding back. And you have these copper wires in which you can manipulate. That's always a good thing. And then what we have here is uh, Zinch bits. I don't know if that's going to work, but you do always keep your bits, and I keep them in containers. Space wool bits as well. Uh, primarily I play Space Wolf, so that might be a um, conductive of my table. Uh, I also have uh, all kinds of bits, <laughs> really, from troll bloods, uh, everything. You know, I just try to save everything in these little containers. And I have Chinese food, and there you go, you have Chinese food, you get yourself a whole bunch of containers, and there you go. Got bits galore. All right, so I took the bits here and what I did was try to make a design through it and what I'm going to do is going to try to make some cracks in the wall I'm using my exacto blade for that be very careful with this you don't want to apply too much pressure that you lose control but doing it in a zigzag motion is definitely helpful and conducive for you to uh, create um, to create these cracking patterns you want that cracking pattern in order to 
um, simulate cracking on the wall. Remember, this is just plastic card, so it doesn't have the depth of chipping or like that, but you can get into it with the blade. At this point, uh, using a new blade is great, but you're going to mess it up, so <laughs> be prepared to chip and gouge into it, and this is exactly what we do to create uh, this kind of texture inside these walls. You kind of want them to fit in. We know that this is not from 40k, but that's okay. We're using bits from that's from 40k. Now time for a carving and engraving kit. They usually come up with these little bits that have little balls on top of them. And I love these things. Um, so tiny. And what we do is simulate bullet holes. Now you can take the bit itself if you don't actually have the Dremel tool or anything like that. Uh, you can actually put it in there and just rotate it like that. Um, Sort of like trying to make a fire or something like that with a small little twig. And doing that, actually, it does a good job of making a hole. Although, you know, it might hurt your finger after a while. But, you know, going back and forth helps too. And you have holes. Yeah, all right. So we have one there, cracks there. I don't know if you can see that. I'll try to focus in on this. Anyhow, you have some cracks in there, you have some texture, and you have a hole right there. When we paint it up, you're really going to notice all the details when it comes to those holes. Look at all those holes now. I bet you can see them now. I drilled out quite a few of them just by just going through the same methodology in which I did. All right, so time for some camouflage. We're going to black bomb this. I like this because it sticks to plastic and it won't rub off on you. You do have to let it dry. There it is. Uh, this is another wall section. It's like a double length section right there. And it has all the holes. It has the accoutrement. It has a wire hanging down. I thought it would be kind of cool just to have these go. Uh, and even a vent too. Now I'm using uh, 123 blocks. Uh, one, two, three blocks, they have these little holes in there, and it's just like, they're just weighted blocks, really good to hold things together, usually at 90 degree angles, anytime tools put out these things, I got them on Amazon, really cool to have around, especially if you're constructing buildings and you need to hold something into place and it needs to be held up standing up. Alright, I'm just putting on some Gorilla Glue, or some Super Glue, just to put these together. And I am building them first. Now you can also use uh, Tamaya's um, extra thin cement, which actually melts the pieces together. But make sure it's plastic on plastic, like you see here, plastic on plastic, uh, in order to create that weld. Uh, and it'll melt the plastic together in order to fuse them together so this way they won't break apart. Now, usually when you put um, super glue together, you can actually snap the pieces back off with enough pressure. Um, but with this, this is pretty much done, like once and done, you kind of don't want it to ever come back. And I am putting a host of that in that little crack right there, so we drip down the piece and make sure that 90 degree angle will not move no matter what. Alright, so there it is, just another piece putting it together. And then I use these dowels, you see these dowels right here, and I'm just putting them across just to strengthening things up. Um, and you can use them to separate. This is one I used to separate from one end to another. I thought I was going to use it for that, but it wasn't It wasn't as sturdy as I thought, so I just changed it up just a little bit. Alrighty, so there it is. Uh, and using that as a brace, I put it all together, and it's looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. Later on, I decide to remove that one block right there, but um, I just did it to glue it together. It does come off after a while. Um, but there's a plastic card sheet in which I used as a base. I really want to build that up. And, uh, I'm going to have to cut another piece for the edge there, which I do right there. So you see the little edge piece. It's not longer square. It's like a little oblong. Uh, just the way I made it. I also cut these out of popsicle sticks. And I just used a very, very thin dowel in order to put planks on the sides. So this way I can use it. There's the craft sticks right there. It's super simple to do. Uh, and yep, you don't use your um, sprue clippers for that. You use some heavy duty uh, wire clippers and that'll help you uh, put that together. It's just so you can have walkways and bridges and gaps. And look, it just fits just so. Perfect. Right. <laughs> Fun to do these little projects right there. Yep, and you have a full top view, and this way you can put your army men all along the top, and you can have that second level. Uh, turn this over, I had it right side up, I'm going to put it uh, that way. There you go. So you can see, that just strengthens it up, and what I'm going to do is go to dip all that um, into wood minwax, and I use a darker color for it, just because. Also, with these planks, uh, what I did was I kind of scraped the top of it to simulate like wood. 
and just something I felt like doing. All right, time to put in, I, I took cork, corking, and now I'm using Tribob wood filler, and I'm just pasting that on on the top, and there goes the design right there for the next building as well, because I built two buildings with this, not just one. Uh, I'm showing one for the purpose of the tutorial, but uh, I built the previous one first, and then I came back and built this one, using the experience I learned from the first one. Usually I build something first, and then come back a second time and film the, film the tutorial, so this way, you know, I have an idea of what it is that I'm doing. I just don't want to just haphazardly go for it. Although I'm sure I could, but what I do is when I first build, I go back and then I go forward and I go back and I just jump around and it's not coherent at all when I uh, just go ahead and go for it and build a building. I, I jump back when I paint. I go from one paint, jump back and forth and back and forth so many times that if I just did a tutorial for my first painting, it would be awfully confusing in my opinion. Now. When it comes to the position of this camera, I had to push it back in order to get the entire uh, vista. So there's going to be very little close-ups here. But you can see what I'm doing um, just by taking one of those uh, craft sticks and just using that. You can use your finger. That is not an issue. Definitely use your finger if you want to uh, to spread this out. But I just used the tool. It was there. And I, uh, <laughs> contrary to what everybody thinks, I actually don't like getting my hands dirty. <laughs> That's my personal preference, like, ew, my hands are sticky. Don't like the stickies. But that's just me. I would never make it as a jean stealer because I, I think they have all kind of excrement that come out of their body. Yuck. All right, so there's uh, Timmy the Tau, who's up there, and I got some skulls. That's right, I'm going to empty this entire bag of skulls. This is actually from Green Stuff World. They put out some de pretty decent resin skulls uh, in a little package that I had ordered back when I ordered rolling pins that I used for bases uh, for my miniatures with green stuff. But yep, I definitely did skulls and I adorned all the inside crevices. After I put some uh, grow gravel in there, some glue, what I'm going to do is I am going to glue or I'm going to super glue little skulls to adorn there and I put quite a few in the cricks and crevices of this uh, monstrosity. Now I don't, and notice I don't put um, bits and bobs of stuff on the corners of the of the building and the reason why I don't want to put it on the corners of the building is because I want normally when you're playing 40k your marines will go into the corner of a building and hunch there this way they can get line of sight and you know I don't want it to really uh, obstruct the miniature at any point in other words I don't want it to really I want to be able to fit miniatures in there I want to be able to fit a dreadnought, if I possibly can, inside there and it not get caught on anything. So I don't want to raise the elevation in there. Oh, that was closed up. Uh, <laughs> okay, so now it's time for some painting. I'm going to start with Rock from Badger Minotaur. Badger Minotaur are the first paint set that I've ever bought. And I bought the entire range and it was super affordable and they give you a plenty of paint for the money that you pay for it. And I do recommend it if you have an airbrush. Uh, I do not like painting it that painting with it by hand like putting it into a um, putting it into a wet palette or something like that in order to paint with it with a paintbrush but for airbrush they do work very well and they have a lot of unique colors however the color of the frosting of the bottle makes it a little difficult for you to understand exactly what the color of the actual contents is. What I do is I put a dollop of white on top and then I paint it, took the paint and put it on the top of the lid so I can identify it. Time for some badger fur. And what we do is go to create highlights. And what I did was, and since I black bonded uh, most of the uh, miniature there, I just wanted to uh, bring that back up bring up and you see where I didn't hit any of the black areas. I'm leaving that intentionally there. You see like on the floor is like black splotches and stuff like that. I'm leaving that there because I'm just having light play on it. And you know, when it comes to weathered and broken down buildings, you can get really, really detailed into it or you could just have a cool dramatic effect. And all I'm doing is a rule of cool, just hitting areas where I think would be uh, brighter getting hit by the sun. However, I've just seen recently uh, where the edges of the buildings were kind of worn out and brown. I might go back at some point 
uh, if I feel like it and just brownie up the edges of the building where it got destroyed. So like that corner right there on the top, uh, it was destroyed. Maybe I come up with some mud or something like that and some uh, some kind of weathering effect. I'm going to put it up there so it looks like really nasty or something like that or burnt up or something like that. So I'll go over with that at some point. But right now, um, I'm very happy with how it came out. So I'll show you how I got to that effect. Um, so. I'm just going on. I'm going to show you how I use the, the airbrush and I actually put the entire stand on a Tamiya rotary kind of like a base like a some kind of workstation and I put this uh, piece of uh, cardboard actually it's, um, it's harder than cardboard it's um, poster board I guess um, and I put that I put that up on the bottom there just to level it out so it can have an even base uh, and I use it as a rotisserie, in other words, to, to move around the model and work around the model without, you know, having to touch the actual model, without having to, you know, shift it and, and risk big fingerprints and messing up. So what I'm doing is I'm touching the actual cardboard on the bottom, um, and not that. And since it's on a, a rotisserie thing, uh, you could actually get a really good, uh, you get a really good way in order to. Um, to move it around without damaging it. Now time for some bone white and I'm using Vallejo model game air. Uh, this is the first time I've ever used game air but since my bone white, my game color bone white was pretty much uh, done and over with, I needed to buy new bone white so if I was going to get it I heard that the game air is really cool so that's where I went for with this, I got the game air. And Vallejo does do great paint for miniatures. I do like Vallejo a lot. Um, I do. I wouldn't get the range of game air until after I finished uh, all my game color. Uh, that would be the only way I'm going to get game air. So as as I will go through game color and I go through it and it finishes, that's when I'll just um, I'll go through game air and I'll try getting those colors as well. Alrighty, so hitting the bone white and going through all the skulls. Now I did want to highlight the skulls and it's just what I wanted to do. And it wasn't so bad. Notice that I'm not using any kind of masking whatsoever. I am just going for it. That's it. Um, and all that freehand does have some overspray, but it's supposed to be dirty. So speaking of dirty, here's some cracked leather by Badger Minotaur. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create like a watermark or a waterline as if the place flooded at some point and then left this big old water stain or muddy stain at some point. Or something had happened where mud it got caked in mud at some point. So I just wanted to go for that effect. I've never done that effect before. I do know that if they, if I wanted to be completely realistic for the gaming table, uh, go throughout all the buildings. I'm gonna have to do all the buildings like that. Or I can put them into like a, a valley. I put these buildings into a little bit of a valley and build everything up. So this way there was some flooding at some point. And that's exactly why it's the way it is. I think that's what I'm probably gonna do. Probably put a little crater around it or something like that. Just simulate that it was in a valley and that's it. And that's how it flooded and that's how the mud got onto the walls. But either way, it looks dirty, it looks dusty, it looks nasty. Um, nasty is a word, I guess. Uh, make sure that not only do you go on the outside of the building, it's really important that you hit on the outside and get that, that muddy mark on the bottom. But, you know, you also need to do that transition for the inside as well. Although it doesn't have to be as predominant as the outside, but it does have to have some kind of watermark. Because these buildings are open, so that means the water would have seeped in on the inside as well. And also drag any kind of mud or stains on the inside as well as the outside. So that is definitely something. Um, that is definitely something to take into consideration when you're doing any kind of watermark or waterline. And I've never done a watermark or waterline before, so this is just definitely new to me. And I was definitely going to uh, explore how to do this. I thought it would be easy, and it was actually easy as I attempted. Sometimes I try something new on a model, and it just comes out to be so easy, which is great because that means I just fly through the model. Pretty much how I flew through this. Now, again, you don't want to overdo this, so uh, very light passes, going back and forth, just building the higher. I'm raising the water level right there. 
Uh, and just reinforcing the mud right there as well. So, you know, it flooded recently, not just a long time ago. So that's exactly the look that I was going for. And I think it really just adds a dimension to the model that you don't normally see. Now here's where you go on the inside and you don't have to be super neat. Just going around doing just one little water line straight across. Make sure you keep the sort of the same kind of level because water does that. It kind of evens out. Uh, it does come in splashes, but only if you were in a river uh, or a monsoon. And but this time, you know, there it is. Just really quick, really light. Looks great. Alrighty, so next up we're going to do some skull white, and this is from Badger Minotaur, and you're going to see I have my headphones on because I'm listening to an audiobook. I really got into uh, audiobook, I'm listening to um, Nagash, The Undying King, which um, I hear is a great book, but since I don't have time to actually read it, I have it on audiobook, and Audible is amazing when it comes to 40k. Um, audiobooks you can just get it once a month and you don't have to pay a whole bunch of money it's it's really great uh, i recommend it when you're hobbying um and i do listen i usually watch um youtube and if i've done with youtube channels are the ones that i wanted to see that week uh, sorry for covering this with my uh headphones there but uh yeah then i'll go into the audiobooks and i feel like i'm really getting stuff done even while i'm getting stuff done so it's like a double a two for here all right, Skull White, I'm hitting all the lights, and uh, there's a reason why I'm hitting all the lights, any kind of a light there, and if I miss the skull or two, I can just do that, because that's going to get covered later on with something anyway, and it's going to add some dimension to it as well. But, and I, I find that when going through this, there's so many skulls that you just miss it. <laughs> you miss some, and it just happens. Um... But yeah, I do want it to go and hit all the lights with that white and want to give that glowing like you have white lights. But we're going to change that in just a bit. Something that I like to do is I like to use uh, ghost tints. And ghost tints are great. Uh, Badger Minotaur ghost tints because um, they really just give a translucency to it. And you'll see in a bit. Right now, we're going to go for a Dragon Off Nightshade and we're just going to go for that cold kind of... Uh, feeling around that rock and just hitting it and I look at how it just tints it ever so lightly I love using shade through an airbrush some people's like well it's not gonna show up look it's showing up it's tinting it perfectly it just takes a moment to do and I'm just gonna do a quick overall blue around the miniature around the I'm gonna call it a miniature anyway uh, around the building or the miniature itself just to get that blue kind of rocky feel like love that blue gotta be blue right just just to unify the piece and so this way the transition from the mud to the actual building isn't so stark i don't want it to be too too stark so just hitting it and that's what i do i unify pieces when i have extra shade and it doesn't take much but it looks great Alrighty, so next up, what we're going to do here is I am going for Raven Black. That's right, black, black, black. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take any exhaust vents. I'm going to have like steam or dirt coming up the vents, like if it was just pulling, pumping out some kind of nasty toxins into the air. And slowly bringing them up, staining up, and almost like a burnt building style, where a fire came out there at some point and burnt the stone a little bit. Uh, not too exaggerated, but you know, pronounced enough. And you want to do this in layers and in stages, uh, bringing up that again. It's just more, more weathering that we're adding to it. So just hitting the rock and then go, hitting the um, the building with a base color and then a highlight and then just weathering it up really does work when it comes to terrain, in my opinion. I haven't done too many sets of terrain, but this is just new for me, so I'm just going for it. And again, new experiences are great for me because, you know, I learn how to do different things. Learning how to do terrain like this is going to eventually help me do diorama style miniatures for painting competitions. And that's it. Just getting this experience over here, making stuff for my gaming table. And then just all I have to do is spend more time building things up, being intentional with everything, everything that I do. And uh, that's going to take time, although I didn't have too much time, I just want to get this on the table. But again, exploring and getting the experience was really, really important to me. Alright, just highlighting those vents, and you see how easy. You really get to see it here, how it just streaks up. 
and yeah like a little bit of fire came out there at some point it looks cool and it adds a dimension to it plus that's black so you really do get to notice it see that that's great it really brings it up i'm gonna make this vent up just a little more as well i want to give it a little more pronunciation uh just so you can your eyes can see it uh from a distance uh, and this one right here, now that I marked them, I know exactly where I want to do. You can pick and choose where you want fire to have come out of your building as well if you're working on a building just like this. Or similar. It was just like this, we're like, wow, you really you know, made your own walls pieces, that's pretty cool. Alrighty, so next up, some ghost tints green. I'm going to have some green lights here. Now, you don't have to restrict yourself to green lights. In the other building, I played around with yellow lights and blue lights and green lights and just a whole bunch of multicolored lights. And then I thought, well, you know what? This is not light bright, so I'm not going to do it like that. I'm just going to have the green lights. It just reminds me of, I don't know, green lights, I guess, um, for veterans. Uh, they said put a, leave a green light on, so I'm going to use a little. I'm going to appreciate my veterans and um, put a green light around this building. Uh, my father was a World War II veteran, actually, uh, and it, it's it's pretty awesome, and uh, I honor him every day. Uh, every every, uh, every day I appreciate what he's done for my family and everything, and what he's done for my country, and I really do appreciate veterans. Uh, you honor this country, honestly. So if you're a veteran, thank you for your service. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Um, you make America really truly what it is all right so just with the ghost tint what we're going to do here is just hitting all the areas which are the white now this is an odd way look at how i'm holding the brush there it was just hard to get in there because that's because i built the building and i didn't do it and painted it in sub assemblies and i didn't really see a way i could have maybe i could have if i spent a lot more time on this piece kind of want to get it done if you, and it came out pretty well it's just doing spot colors with the ghost tint and all it does is exactly that tint the area if you painted it white it's going to look like it's glowing green right there and it's super easy to use it and i love using ghost tints like that uh the only thing about ghost tints are that they can be glossy so be careful about using too too much of it um but for all intents and purposes, it comes out really well as a little accent for your lights. And you need to be very, very particular where your lights are and you need to be able to get them all. And of course, you miss some here and there and then you come back and you hit them, with, you hit them later on. Um, again, doing a structure this large, there's always a lot of things that you can miss. You know, there's a lot of details you can miss. Especially because, you know, I tried to do this. I think I built this uh, thing one day and then on the next day, I just painted it up. So it only like took two sessions, in other words. Uh, so I built it a couple of months ago, actually. And then uh, when I decided to paint it, I sat down and I, I start to finish uh, in one session. So I just sat down and did it. Um, so I wanted to make sure that I got it done and recorded while I'm doing it. Again, there's that awkward position. I did it with my thumb because I couldn't really get in there any other way with the airbrush. So there you go. Um, and get it on camera. So I <laughs> just wanted to show you what I was doing there with the airbrush. And using an airbrush really does help add a lot of values. I mean, it really does help if you know how to use it. It just saves so much time. Um, because in order to get the same kind of effects, you imagine just spray spray, it's done with the with the paintbrush. You gotta go in there and layer it and layer it. Wait till it dries, do another layer, wait till it dries, do another layer, go on to the next light. This one I'm just poking them out, man. Poke, 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 going straight through it. So I save so 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 much time uh, in actually using an airbrush than using a paintbrush. All right, next up, I have some posters, and I got this from Regimental Standard uh, from the Warhammer website, Warhammer Community website, go Regimental Standard, and just look through all the Regimental Standards and just get the posters. And what I did was, is that I took those images and put them onto my word processing program, and I shrunk them down to any size that I want, and then to, went to a high quality uh, color printer and printed them out, and it took two sheets uh, to get all the posters that I, dat that I did for this piece, and it looks so cool. And let me tell you about how I put these on. This is just really, really simple. What I did was, is I took white glue. I use Elmer, Elmer's All Glue, multi-purpose glue. I don't, I stay away from the, um, 
the children's glue, the school glue. I use the glue all. That's the best one in my opinion. It has more uh, stickiness to it. I don't know. Uh, and I put it into a little cup. And then what I did was I took sepia ink from uh, Ronald Downey um, FW ink. And I put in a couple of drops of that. This way it has a brown tinge to it. Then a little bit of water. And you get some brown dirt on it. And then you put all the posters in. Finally, I go back up with the steel, and I'm doing all the grates around all the lights. Now, you have a nice glowing light, but you want to kind of get the steel grating around it. And you got to do every single light, and that gets a little tricky because there's quite a bit in it. And I told you before, if you want to do this by brush, it's going to take a long time, and it took me a quite a bit of time, but I'm going to transition uh, really quickly and zoom in and show you how I do one of these at the very least so you get an idea of exactly how it is how I did it. So I'm trying to use a little bit of the edge of the brush, not really the tip of the brush. I'm trying to go in and I have just enough steel and I'm using steel from uh, Vallejo Metal Color and you can use anything you want, it's up to you. And I'm just doing the hash pattern, just like the hashtag pattern uh, right there, or the number sign, that's what you called it when I was younger. And um, just make sure that you don't get it all over. And if you do get it all over, just hit it with white again. And then just hit the uh, ghost tint and then try it again. So, Seraphon Sepia now. Time to, to Sepia up all the skulls. And I do mean all the skulls. I'm going to just do one just to show you what it's like. This wasn't too crazy. Uh, it didn't take too, too much time. It wasn't uh, super controlled. It was controlled enough that you know i just tinted them down and really give it a realistic because um look of a dirty bone you dirty dirty bone um <laughs> that's exactly what i was going for and i think it looks great a uh, great with the contrasting uh gray i wanted to do a gray buildings and i wanted to try to see what that would look like because i've done white buildings i've done blue buildings now and now i want to do gray buildings and just mixing it up trying to play around with colors so when I do something it comes out you know the way I want it to with a whole bunch of different dimensions especially with that new terrain now I'm using uh, Prussian blue with some FW blue ink uh, as well and Mephiston red with some FW ink red ink and then I can use Goblin Green with uh, FW Ink Green Ink. And I just moved the ink inside there because I really want it to be, um, to come through. In other words, inks are hugely and highly pigmented. So when doing details like that, you do want to do that. And you some picking out the wires, just, you know, red, uh, blue, and green, just because I feel like it, you know? I just wanted to add some detail to it. So if you look closely, a lot of the wires are actually painted and uh, not just gray, because hitting that and hitting those details, I think is what actually makes the miniature um, really, really stand out and be unique. And I have to tell you, doing buildings, it was fun. I'm not used to this like grand scale. I'm going to do a rotation right here so you can see it, and I'm going to go over to the pictures. I'm not used to doing this grand scale. It was fun. It was interesting. I like it. I'm going to go back to painting miniatures, though. Uh, well, that's it. Catch you on the outro.
Well there it is, the 40k imperial building set built up and ready for my gaming table. Well if you like this video, like, share, comment and subscribe and we'll catch you next time on the Miniatures Paintbrush.